Ikut. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, requesting the congregation to please stand as the registrar um, leads the procession of the graduating students, the members, the faculty of the SIBS Council, and the chief guests uh, are about to begin this evening. Can we have some music in play, please? <laughs>
The name of God, the God of our pigments. Jesus Christ, who called us to experience the Catholic life, and the Holy Spirit who unites us, people from north, south, east, and west, as one SIBS family. I declare this valedictory service 2024 open. And we all praise God by singing, We draw to the blood.
God, we thank you for the completion of another academic year and for allowing us to play a small part in the lives of our students, especially our graduates. We are grateful to you for your guidance and help as we show in this important ministry of the imparting theoretical education. Above all, we thank you for giving us And women while they were here as they go out into the different ministries may they continue to feel the bond that has been created here and serve you and your people and creation with love god of grace we pray let this auspicious benedictory service be for your glory and bring blessing to all of us Ask this prayer in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I request our principal, Dr. Samuel George, for a word for the others. Praise God for this wonderful opportunity God has granted in our lives. A word of welcome to all those who are attending today's benediction service of 2023. A very special word of thanks to Reverend Dr. Lunatula Lankumar, the Registrar of the Senate of Sarampo, who is in our midst today. We will be welcoming her later before she enters the pulpit. A word of thanks and welcome to Reverend Sumil Damke, the Executive Secretary of the SIBS Ministries, who was also our commissioning speaker in the morning. We also recognize Reverend Simon Jyoti, the member of our SIBS Council among us. Also, I recognize the presence of Reverend Paul Agustin, the pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church, Bangalore. There are other pastors, evangelists, family members, friends of our graduating class who are also attending this auspicious, this solemn occasion 
we welcome all of you. I also recognize some of our former students, some of our former faculty members who are also uh, here the capacity of uh, uh, being related to our graduates. We welcome all of you too. A very special word of welcome to our graduating class. It is their day. It is for them. We are all here. So we welcome them too for this auspicious occasion. I also take this opportunity to recognize the, the presence and the hard work of all our faculty members who are sitting here. Uh, it is their hard work that uh, is reflected on the graduating class. So we welcome all of you too. I also take this opportunity to welcome all those who are here, our staff members, our working staffs and friends. And if someone is visiting us from the neighboring churches, we welcome all of you to, to this wonderful occasion. Stay with us prayerfully this will not be any validity service like anything else or what you see in other places where we are together to celebrate what God has done in the lives of these young men and women. They are going out of this institution to become ministers of God's work. It is for that purpose we are here. So as congregation, as we sit together, um, let us continue to pray for them that as they move out of this place that they would be a blessing to the, the community outside the four walls of this uh, institution. So once again, I welcome all of you. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Greetings. I would like to call Reverend Simon Jabi Manta of SIDS Council. Thank you, Mr. Rishwan Jawaraj Khan, Faculty of SIDS, and Reverend Paul Atherson, Pastor, Emmanuel Baptist Church, Bombay. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On the seventh one graduation of South India Biblical Seminary. I congratulate all the students who are going to graduate short while from now. You have sharpened your skills and shaped your character at SIDS. And, uh, our prayer is that you will be an excellent instrument in the hands of God and for the education of each person. So congratulations to you and to all the faculty members uh, who have spent uh, your time and energy and your life this character of the young men and women who will be graduating today. I congratulate the principal and the other staff members for putting your hard work. And uh, please be assured that we will be praying for you. And we have been praying for this wonderful day. And as you graduate and go out from this place, you are always in our prayers. And on behalf of the seminary, uh, greetings to you all once again. Thank you. Greetings to you all in the most precious and ever matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God for this wonderful opportunity to stand on behalf of the faculty members of SIDS to convey the greetings to the future of the church, my dear student friends, and to all the members who are presented on this auspicious day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Psalm 118:24. I believe that the teaching and training you had in SIDS has made you all gurus in a way. I hope SIDS had played an unique role in the life of every graduate during your four years or five years of studies. SIDS is not just a place, it is an emotion for all of you. This is a place where you have shared your happiness, love, cry, etc. This place has seen all your ups and downs, your failures, your success, your losses and your gains. God was so good to all of you to complete your studies successfully. My dear graduate friends, this is not an end. It is just a beginning. You are in the road to success. Get ready to face many challenges, hardships, but remember, we have God who is there for us in all our situation. I like to quote from Benjamin Franklin, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Don't stop with your BD, and do ambitious. Continue to learn, unlearn, and also relearn. Michelle Obama has said, it is, it's, it is absolutely still possible to make a difference. Yes, it is still possible to make a difference. Let this world see a difference through you. Let you all be a channel of blessing to the entire nation and to the church at large. Try to be an agent of transformation in the society wherever you serve our God. I just want to end with two quotes. I hope your dreams take you to the corners of your smiles, to the highest of your hopes, to the windows of your opportunities, and to the most special places your heart has ever known. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Eleanor Roosevelt. Once again, I thank God for this privilege and I congratulate the graduating students to have a bright and promising vision and mission. May God bless you all in all your endeavors in the near future. With you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God for this opportunity. My thanks to the principal, faculty, and the students of uh, SRDS and for extending this invitation for me to be a part of this very, very special occasion as we celebrate the graduating class of 2024. And the greetings from Emmanuel Church, and I wish you all the very best. And as you complete and step out to any ministry God has called you to. I want to want us to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. As mentioned in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 17, a very, very familiar word. Jesus says, Come, follow me. Jesus said, And I will make you fishers of men. Because this is a very, very familiar verse and very important lessons for each one of us. Where Jesus says, Come, follow me. A disciple of Jesus Christ is a lifelong disciple. Okay, so as the faculty member just now said, you don't end with your BD or MDiv or BCS, you continue learning, unlearning and relearning. Okay, and uh, Jesus says, follow me, which means he is the leader and we have to follow him, which means obey him. And uh, Jesus also said, it's not going to be easy. It is called for denial of self, it's called for carrying your cross and following him daily, which means to be obedient. And secondly, he says, I will make you. A very, very amazing promise. It is not in us. He says, I will make you. Okay, it is his responsibility. When you come under his lordship, his guidance and leadership, he says, I will make you. So discipleship is all about being transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And finally, he says, I will make you fishers of men. No matter which ministry God calls you to, do not forget the mission of Christ Jesus. The mission of Christ Jesus is people. And he challenges the first disciples, I will make you fishers of men. And it's my prayer, the graduating class, that as you continue to serve, as your terminal in motor says, say to be served, or serve, say to serve. Okay? I remind the words of Jesus Christ to follow Christ, to be changed by Christ, and fulfill the mission.
because all this is finished, so all the very best. God bless. Thanks to our Lord for his merits and blessings. Lord of vision, we thank you for the valuable time we and our graduating students have spent for five years. The knowledge we gain, the friendships and relationships we build, and the new dreams and visions we receive. That is when we thank you for the opportunities of reflecting, teaching, learning your living words and applying them in the living realities of life. Thank you for helping us to gain wisdom and use this to us the mission and ministry of the church. May each graduating student feel proud and celebrate the success of their studies. God of life's journey, we give you praise for the talents of these graduates, for their excitement, wonder, and their quiet. We appreciate your discernment in helping them choose wisely from so many conflicting and overwhelming possibilities. We thank you for the wisdom to discern your call in their lives to be identified with the marginalized self-giving love expressed through Jesus Christ as a pattern for living. And we thank you for the courage to stand with you for justice and peace in this world at this time. Give all this thanksgiving in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I invite Mrs. Dick Colin Wilbury to lead us in the prayer of completion and followed by the assurance of burden by Reverend Franklin Hudson. But let us confess as God is our leader. God, in the right time, every human has an undertaking. Like all of us, the Son of God was tested in every respect. But unlike all of us, he knew no sin through Christ that made him to be sin for our sake. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy. Please to help in the we let ourselves away from God and his sacrificial, loving, and giving the very pleasures and humanity of his will. Sometimes we divide ourselves on various fronts on the language, color, class, culture gender and ethnicity, resources, ambitions, and desires. Pardon us and bring us back home to the communion of the King. Oh God, when we have not answered in the ways or in the times 
to desire, we have to have done that we lean on our own understanding and intuition and not acknowledge when we always ignoring and pushing aside the wisdom guidance of the Supreme Master. <laughs> Times we felt discouraged and even lost hope, down in spirit, not knowing where to turn or how to look for do the things that do not go well for us. sisters and brothers. God is at work in us and with us. God is our clothing in which love enwraps us, holds us, and all encloses because of God's tender love, so that God may never leave us. We are protected safely in love, in who as in wealth, by the goodness of God. God urges us Keep the word near you, even on your lips and in your heart, this word is your salvation. As we worship today, with the word on our lips and in our hearts, experience the salvation of God for all manner of things in our lives. In the promise, presence, and power of God for all manner of things, in Jesus' name we pray. to call our principal, Dr. Samuel Joyce, to come forward and give the annual report of the principal. Members, friends, pastors, evangelists, the graduating class students, and other dignitaries. It gives me immense pleasure to stand in front of you and in front of God to read out two highlights of the academic year 2023. took over as the, the principal of SIDS on May 11th, 2023. Along with me, the new faculty members joined us, Dr. Orin Sani Sitri, Reverend Nakhani, and uh, Mrs. Tiny Rinchu. We also have the services of a few of our visiting faculty members, Ma'am Asangla and Ma'am Manjusha. Apart from this, we have been given service by various other people who come and help us in our academic endeavors. The seminary began its academic year on June 19, 2023. Currently, we have 69 students, 12 women, and 57 men, representing nine states and 10 denominational backgrounds. Throughout the year, we have various activities both at the academic level as well as uh, practical and at spiritual levels. One of the ways that we 
endeavor for academic excellence is being affiliated to the Senate of Sarampur College University and we are indeed very glad to have our registrar who will be addressing the gathering today. We also have an ATA accreditation for immediate as well as the ended level. We have the last class of BTH currently. We will be passing out next year. And we also have uh, the ATA program which runs too. After a prolonged accreditation process for the ATA, after 12 years, the, the team visited us and uh, uh, after the due assessment, they have granted the ATA accreditation for until 2028. We are divided in, we divide our academic year into two semesters. End of October, we complete our first academic semester. It will be followed by examination. And then in the month of November, we begin our second semester. And we just recently concluded our classes on March 19th. Our second semester has come to an end. And from the 1st of April, our exams will. Apart from this, in our endeavor for scriptural emphasis on archaeological education, we conduct a scriptural knowledge exam twice a year. And uh, today we will be declaring the winners of these scriptural knowledge exam. And there will be surprises too. Every month, we have faculty seminars where faculty members, you know, we are assigned to present research papers. And these research papers are then edited and they will become part and parcel of our academic journal. About that, I will be speaking a bit later. As part of our endeavor, academic endeavor, theological endeavor, we are coming out with uh, a book which will be uh, released later uh, by our guest. More about that will be shared to you by Dr. Oren Sarishitri. In the academic office, we have the able leadership of Reverend Makami Kasomba, who is the registrar of this seminary, who was assisted ably by Mrs. Carolyn Jasper in the last uh, few months. Ms. Sharon Tiga is helping us in the academic office. In our hostel, we have 52 men and 11 women residing. On the right, we have the James R. Bishop Memorial Men's Hostel. On the left, we have the Anna McGee Women's Hostel. So we have 52 men here and 11 women there. Apart from this, we have six family students who are residing in the family quarters. For us, the, the day begins at around 5 or 5.30 in the morning for personal devotion. Evening Vesper service we have from 6.30 to 7. From 4 to 6 every evening we have time for sports and other activities. On Wednesdays we have community campus cleaning drive where all of us are involved including faculty members. Every alternate Thursdays 
We have the sing song services. Two times during this year, we had 12 hours of chain prayer. Also, praying for our nation, for what is happening in our nation. Apart from that, we have two students' organizations. They play a major role in the various activities of our college called the Missionary Prayer Band, MPB. Every year in the month of October, they conduct a convention. And also, they are involved in helping many missionaries. Uh, very, very recently, they have uh, financially supported two missionaries from Jammu and Kashmir. So they, they go around, they ask people to help. Apart from this, they have been helping even our students. They play a major role in the various activities of our institution. Also, a very important student organization in our college is called Christus Sevak and Sevika Samaj. So, uh, the Samaj students they play a major role in the various cultural activities of our Apart from that, they are also involved in debate competitions, carol competitions, and also for the welfare of the students, especially the students, those who come from financially weak background. Uh, they have been helping them in a very special way. So we recognize their contribution to our community. These two organizations were ably led by the faculty members, Reverend Mahani and uh, Ms. Anusuya, along with the, the cabinet members. We have a group of good Samaritans in our hostels who are very good in taking care of people when they get sick. And especially for the needy students, they have been a great help. <coughs> The Good Samaritans. At this moment, I take this opportunity to thank both the deans. The men's dean, Mr. Vishwant Jairaj, and the women's dean, Dr. Oren Sani Shitri, for their able leadership in carrying out the various activities of the hostel. Also, give a lot of importance to ministry. Ministerial formation is what we are doing here. It's not just uh, classroom theological education, but also we want these men and women to be ministers of the world. So we give a lot of importance to ministry. This year, our students were assigned to around 30 churches in Bangarpet, KGF, and Kolar areas. To assist churches in their youth meetings, Sunday school, ladies' meetings, elders' meetings. Many a times, they are given teachings. They assist during the Eucharist services. So they get practical exposure of the ministry in various churches. Because of that, many of us also get opportunities to go and share God's word and to explain about the ministry of SIBS in various local churches. I thank Reverend Javesh A. for the able leadership he has given to the practical ministry of SIBS. Well, we are not just an academic community. Also a worshipping community. And for us, this small yellow building that you see, it, this is the most important building of our, our community. This is our chapel. As the seminary follows a certain theme every year, the theme for 2023 and 24 
that we had chosen was journey in faith, hope, love, and unity. Throughout the year, we focused our sermons, our programs, everything on the feet. Especially the Sunday services are conducted every Sunday by the care group. You know, we are divided into various care groups of faculty members. So every evening, we have the corporate worship in our chapel. And every second Sunday of the month, the communion service is conducted. We also call guest speakers, especially from the, the local churches. Uh, the reason is that our students get an exposure of different denominational worship styles because we are an ecumenical institution. We have students from various denominations so that you know we, we learn each other's way of worshiping. On 3rd March, the faculty members conducted the service. Uh, where the whole, all of us were involved in conducting the, the service on 10th March, we had the senior students. They conducted the service. So it was uh, a wonderful experience to hear uh, our seniors speaking to us and leading the service. On the Women's Day, we had a very special Women's Day special service was conducted by the SABS Women's Fellowship. Uh, activities were performed, but the most important part of it was the message that was brought to us uh, by Mr. Vishwan Jairaj, speaking the importance of women for the society, for the church. On February 9th, we had uh, a musical night that was conducted. Uh, some of you might have seen, it is on our YouTube channel too. Um, sorry, uh, on our SIBS Facebook page, uh, we put it live. We have regular morning chapels, which are conducted by students and faculty members. Senior servants is a very important part of our activities of the of, of our chapel. 18 final year students completed their senior sermons, which was later evaluated. Evening chapels are very important for us. And uh, the last uh, few weeks, uh, we are spending some, some time in praying for our nation. And one of the, the burden that I had in my heart after we returned back from our Christmas the, the political situation that we face. We decided that we as a community, we will pray that God would intervene. And we know that the elections are very near. As a, as a community of faith, it is our responsibility that we pray for our nation. So we continue to pray from our chapel. We also during this period, we, we started um, our presence in the social media because we live in a world, if you are not on social media, you are not in the world. So we ventured into the, the social media. Uh, we have an official Facebook page. We have the Instagram account. And we have the YouTube channel. So currently, this program is being live telecasted through our YouTube channel. So if you can, you know, get the link from somebody who is from the institution, they can share it with you. Our endeavor is to reach out to as many people as possible. On our YouTube channel, what we do is every month, Choir will sing a song, and one of our faculty members will preach a sermon for around eight minutes. It will 
be recorded on it and it will be based on the theme that we have. So you can go to our YouTube channel and listen to some of these uh, sermons and the songs by our choir. Right about this building, we have the Anand Giri Pustakalaya. It is the bookshop. The primary objective is to provide students with essential books at a discounted prices from the publishers. This year we procured around 550 titles. Uh, it underscores the institution's commitment to academic excellence, student welfare and financial stewardship. I thank God for the leadership of this tiny Rinchui in assisting the successful functioning of the Pustakalaya. I want to recognize the, the contribution of Reverend Franklin Joseph, who is our chaplain, who has ably assisted us in our, the various chapel activities throughout the year. In the month of June, we are also planning to come out with a journal, which will be called Anandagiri Journal of Theology. The articles are already being received. We are in the process of editing, and hopefully, by the by the end of June, the first issue of our journal will be out. Our we also, as part of our, our endeavor of not just being a theological community here, but also to provide our, our services to a community that is outside during our Founders Day, we conducted a blood donation camp. Uh, I think around 31 units of blood was donated uh, from our small community, uh, including some women candidates were there, you know, who were able to donate the blood. And uh, it was it was a very joyful experience for us because we had put up banners out there and some neighbors came. Uh, so they also came and donated blood on, on our Founders Day. Also, a very important aspect of our seminary was the beginning of the SIBS Women's Fellowship. Folks of our community, they came together. So now we have an SABS Women's Fellowship. And uh, they have been conducting various activities. And uh, uh, they have also contributed to the, to the institution and to theological education by some kind of fundraising. So we, we recognize their contribution too. Few highlights that I have shared with you. Uh, I want to thank the chairperson of our council, Reverend Subhas Gongadive, who was able to come. The executive secretary, Reverend Sunil. Our treasurer, Mr. Sam Selvin. The council members, the board members of SIPS Ministries, for their continuous help in taking forward this institution. I, I, I recognize with much appreciation the work and the help and the guidance that they have provided. I'm also extremely grateful to my faculty colleagues. If they are not there, I will not function. If they are not there, there is no SIBS. I want to really recognize the hard work our faculty members have put in. It is because of them there is a class of 2024. So we thank God for the hard work even in the midst of all challenges, they come forward to keep
teach our students. So I'm, I'm grateful to them. I'm also grateful to the, the staff members of our office. There's a lot of staffs in our office, in our library, there are a lot of workers. It is because of them we have this beautiful campus. So I, I really recognize their contributions that they have made. Also, recognize the importance of students. The students are the backbone of our, our institution. I'm grateful to God for the commitment they have made to come here to learn and to equip themselves as ministers of the world. So I'm grateful to them. We are grateful to the well wishers, prayer partners, many former students, friend circles who have helped us in this journey of 2023 and 24. I especially want to thank many of my my personal friends and my former students whenever I have approached them for any financial assistance for theological education they have come forward to help us in a very substantial way so I want to thank my, my personal friends and my former students who have come forward to help us Above all, without the help of God, nothing is possible. It is God's grace that has sustained us thus far. He has been our Ebenezer. It is with that word I want to conclude my principles report here. God bless you. Take care. Response from the graduate. For this, I invite Mr. Prasanna Raj A. Respected Dr. Lanka Lankumar, Registrar, the Senate of Surangu College, University, Reverend Sunil Gante, Executive Secretary, SRBS Ministries. Dr. Samuel George, Principal, SRBS, faculty members, family members, friends, well wishers, the graduating class of 2024, and my friends. Good evening and praise the Lord. I am Prasanna Raj from BD final year, and on behalf of the graduating class of 2024, I stand here to say a few words. I thank God, the Almighty, who has been kept us safe thus far. Indeed, God has been the Ebenezer. I take this opportunity to thank the principal, including the former principals, faculty members, also former faculty members, staff, workers, students, friends, well wishers, and family members. For some, it was in 2019, and others in 2020. The journey at SIBS began. We came from different cultures, backgrounds, regions, but soon we became a family. We learned how to respect others, especially those from other denominations. The subject of five years of church traditions helped us to overcome these barriers. COVID-19 played havoc with our lives and education. We asked to move out. We stumbled to find buses and trains to reach our destination. After a period of uncertainty, we found that returning back soon to the seminary was not an option. We switched to online mode. Initially, we were excited, but soon realized how much we were losing for not being in the offline classes. We earned for the day to return back. In 2022, we returned back, but everything was so different. We struggled to cope up with the offline education, however, the hard work of our faculty members and the prayers of well-wishers helped us to overcome these challenges. Each assignment, book and article reviews, 
expect us to give insight to while preparing it. Each sermon in chapel strengthened our spiritual life and helped to correct ourselves. Apart from this, the two student organizations, Missionary Prayer Band and Krista Seva and Savita Samaj, gave us ample opportunities to train us in missions and preaching. The time spent in library, mess hall, playground, mission trips, all shaped us what we are today. In all these years, we had both good and bad days, which taught us many things. Some of us got married and had babies. We lost one of our classmates, Mr. Ashish. Some of us lost their parents, lost their babies. Some had surgeries and some met accident. However, in the midst of all these two, we are able to experience God's abounding grace. The motto of the seminary said to serve through the transformative education gained here has made ample confidence in the Lord that we could be able to face the challenges outside the four walls of this campus. Today, on this auspicious day of our graduation, we make this place that we would be faithful to God's call, ministry, and mission. Thank you all. God bless you. Call Reverend Manju Sam for the scripture reading and followed by a special song by SIDS. Give us the charity. First is from Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10, and then to Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. First reading Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to bring out to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Luke chapter 10, 1 to 12. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, Peace. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from his house, from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its street and say, the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom
Our principal, Dr. Samuel George, to come forward and introduce our speaker. Sorry. For in the city prayer, I call Miss Mrs. Samuel Paul and Mrs. Priyanka to come and lead us one after. Compassionate and merciful God, we pray for the people who suffer from wars, people who suffer from human made structures and natural calamities, people who suffer from sickness, deadly diseases, and virus. Especially, we pray for the upcoming election of our nation. May you give us good leaders who can work for the welfare of our nation. Lord, in your mercy, we beseech you, O oh Lord, to bless our state, Karnataka. May the elected leaders work tirelessly for the upliftment of the people of our state. We pray for the water crisis prevalent in many cities of our state. O oh Lord, grant us your blessing through proper rainfall in many places of our state. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, we pray for South Indian Biblical Seminary for guiding and leading us in realizing our vision for your mission. Help us to serve faithfully under your grace in imparting theological education and to serve the churches and society with the vision and mission that you have bestowed on us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our graduating students that you would fill them with your vision, courage, hope, and love. Inspire them with your servant leadership for the liberation of the poor and the oppressed, for the transformation of the society to the power of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. come to a very important uh, part of our valedictory service. So we're going to listen to our, our chief guest addressing especially our graduating class and also to all of us. Before that, I want to say a few words about our chief guest. And uh, after that, I'll request Sunil Damge, our Executive Secretary, 
to honor her by placing a shawl on her shoulders. Dr. Reverend Dr. Limatala Longkumar, we have personally I have been associated with her for some years now. And uh, to my surprise, it was in the month of November. I came to know that uh, she is a graduate from UBS. She studied at UBS and later in UBC and for her doctoral studies at Satri. She is one of the finest academician in the field of Christian education in India. It's one area that very few people go for further studies. We are indeed blessed to have our Senate Registrar, who is actually a doctorate holder in Christian education. She has taught many years at Eastern Theological College, ETC, then for some time at Bishop's College, also helping the, the NIPCHICS program. Later, she was elected as the dean of the doctoral program of the Senate of Sarapur, which is called the Satri. And currently, we are honored that she serves as the registrar of the Senate of Sarapur College University. She is the first woman to hold this very prestigious position. Yes. Many of us know her husband. We have studied a lot of his works, books. Dr. Wati Launcher is her husband. They are blessed with three sons. was in the month of the year of sorry in the year of 2012 that uh, i first met her um, i was on my way to mokokchung nagaland for my engagement so she hosted us when she was at jorhat that time she hosted me and my family members at her home uh, as we were going for my engagement. It was, it was in 2012 that I first met her. And since then, we have been very closely associated because of my, my late wife. And also on various occasions where we were able to meet together. Even last week, we were together in uh, Haryana for a uh, it was in the month of November when I met her during the convocation in Kerala. I said, ma'am, you are coming for our valedictory service. And she said that, you know, a lot of people are there. I have a lot of work. I have meetings. This, that. And I said, nothing to you. You are coming. Because of the insistence that we made and the, the relationship that me and my late wife had with her. I am extremely honored and I'm, I'm sure that all of us are indeed honored that the, the Registrar of the Senate of Sarampur is here to address the class of 2024. And we are indeed blessed with your presence. I now request uh, Reverend Sunil Dange to honor.
Thank you, Reverend Dr. Samuel George, the principal of ACBS, for such a wonderful introduction about me and my family. Uh, it was too good. I don't know whether it is really right or not. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to this valedictory service of 2024. And I want to tell you that this is my first visit to SIDS, and so I'm more excited to come here in Indi. Thank you so much for your warm welcome and also the hospitality that you have been extended to me. Thank you so much for everything. The scripture portions have read to us. Based on that, I would like to bring a few words, particularly to our graduating class of 2024. So, respective principal and the executive secretary of this college, Reverend uh, Suti, I don't know how to pronounce, sorry, uh, Samuel Tangi. And also the Board of Governors who are here this evening, and also the faculty and staff of this institution, students' body, parents and relatives, pastors and church leaders, distinguished guests, and well-wishers, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It is indeed an honor and privilege to be invited to this auspicious occasion. I bring warm greetings from the Synod of Sirambur College. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Under the Synod of Sirambur College, we have altogether 71 different colleges affiliated to the Senate two in Sri Lanka, one in Bangladesh, and the rest are in India, across the Indian subcontinent. So Senate is growing and it is becoming bigger and bigger. We have this year more than uh, 15,000 enrollment for different programs. SABS is one of them. And I know that for a few years, Isabius was out from the Senate family, but thank God that it has come back and then it is becoming one of the important affiliated colleges of the Senate. Earlier also, Senate, uh, SB, Isabius was one of the important you know, colleges of the Senate in the past. And now I can see that it is growing, coming up. And I wish that in the days to come, not only DD program, but you can come for postgraduate and even in above. So may I request the Board of Governors and also the church leaders who are part and parcel of this institution, work hard, and then, you know, come up for different programs that you have. And so wish you all the best under the able leadership of Reverend Dr. Samuel George. I congratulate the class of 2024. And this badge is very, very important in the history. Why? We are called the COVID badge. <laughs> we admitted in 2020, right? especially the BD. So we were really worried what to do with the, you know, all the programs of the Senate because it was locked down. And that's how we have, you know, switched over to the online mode. And, and therefore this batch, we stayed at home almost two years and two years in the college campus. So. This is a very important batch. Even in the Senate also, we have a lot of problems. 
in terms of, you know, mark entry because of the COVID, we have made a lot of changes in the marking systems also. So for this batch, you know, different years, different marking systems. And the computer also sometimes doesn't accept a lot of problems that we are also facing even in the senior office. So this batch and the next year batch, after they graduate slowly, I hope even the Senate also will come to a normal life. And this is what we are hoping for. So this is very, very special because they learn half of the courses in online mode. I don't know whether they have attended or not. But I'm very sure because they never on the videos. And so we can see only sometimes trees, sometimes star in the classroom Zoom, not a real face, even sometimes animals also. <laughs> yeah, some birds. So we were, many teachers were teaching to those different kinds of, you know, animals or characters. We don't know exactly whether the real person is listening and attending to or not. That was the struggles students also had, even teachers also had lot of difficulties. Anyway, thank God you went through all these things and you are completing. And so very special batch of COVID-19. Friends, the context where you will serve Christ are full of challenges. The looks of election is coming up now and the political drama which is going on in India. Very, very disturbing in alignment. The fabric of Indian democracy and secularism are under attack in the present government working system. <laughs> Not only that, we don't have freedom of speech in expressions in India. And this is a very, you know, tough time that India as a whole, whether in political, social, economic, and religious aspects, we have been through lots and lots of problems. Christian persecutions in human rights issues in India are also increasing and at alarming rates. Now we used to hear often only happening this kind of things maybe in, in parts of India, some parts of India. But now, even in Northeast India, we are facing now, especially in the state of Assam. A lot of things are going on. So this is the, you know, context in which we are going to serve God. The ecological crisis in climate change. Now, after coming here, I'm hearing that uh, almost six, seven months you are not getting rain. And I hope that the uh, rain will come. The, the sky shows that, uh, you know, something is coming and looking hopeful that, you know, abundant rain will come. Water crisis in Bangalore, we have been reading every day in the news and so on. This is what we have. And I think ecological crisis, climate change, it is all because of human greediness, human greediness that all these things are happening. Mother Earth cannot hold human greediness. We are also living in the artificial intelligence era. And we're a little worried, especially artificial intelligence, uh, chat GBT, and many other things are coming. And so our worriness, even the Senate of Serampo College is that the students allow all the assignments to be done by ChatGPT. What will happen? There are a lot of things. Of course, you know, technology is bringing a lot of important things for us. But at the same time, now in this particular age, what shall we do? Theologically, how are we prepared to face this? If you just give a command, ChatGPT can do everything for you. So a lot of, uh, you know, good things coming, 
at the same time challenges. So these are, you know, many challenges that we have. And then you look at the church today, our church. I want to tell you that whether north, south, east, west, whether you belong to the, you know, mainline churches or charismatic churches or independent churches, I want to tell you churches in India very much institutionalized. Institutionalized. In many parts of India, we have caste system. Okay, caste system. In many of the mainline churches, again, we have, you know, rigid hierarchical structures, just like monarchical system of church structures with powers and authorities concentrated and, you know, few leaders of the church. Church in India is also not free from corruption, full of politics. There's no humility, no humility. A servanthood model on the part of the Christian leaders. In this context, God is calling you, particularly the graduating class. I know that uh, all together uh, you are 22, right? 22 are graduating, 17 in PD, one MDF, four PCS. So 22 of you getting ready to go and then serve the Lord in different capacities. So the world that you are going to is full of challenges. Now in the gospel of Luke chapter 10 verses 1 to 12, which is read to us very clearly, about sending out 70 to the disciples in some versions of the Bible you say 70. Okay, so 70 or 72, doesn't matter that Jesus sent them out to different parts, or in other words, in our context, we can say to the different churches or different congregations to serve God. Here, you know, Jesus Christ stating that people who serve Christ are like the lambs, lambs among the wolves. So 22 of you are going out like lambs among the many wolves. Lambs are timid, quiet, we all know that very gentle and you know, you know grace, together, flock together, but they are also, you know, lack of protection from the predators also. They listen to their master's voice because they are together. And then this is how they do it. But yet, they are very timid and indecisive animals. This is what the Chinese you know, um, calendar and zodiac also describe about the character of this lamb. Very hardworking, trustworthy, cooperative, creative, but again, often timid. So God is sending you like lambs among the wolves. But wolves, you know, the characteristics of wolves are they are herds that live in groups, in community. They always live together, hunt together for the prey. So they bark to frighten it, okay? Frighten the animals most of the time, and then this is how they attack, and then they, you know, you know, take it, catch the animals. But once they catch the animals, you can also watch in the TV or YouTube or so, they will always fight for their share of meat. They will always fight to take the biggest portion of the meat while hunting together. But when they are about to share their portions that they have hunted, they will always fight, become individualistic to get the bigger portions of that. So here, Jesus is telling to 70 or 72 
disciples are saying that I'm sending you like lambs among the wolves. So among the wolves means the world where you're going to serve, the church you're going to serve are full of hardships, full of challenges. You may also face some of the leaders of the churches are, may not be like, you know, Christ-like in the way that they serve God in the pastoral ministry, but may not be disheartened because of all these things. From this passage, I would like to take a few things for us to ponder upon. Number one is, here Jesus said, do not take your purse. In other words, do not take money. Why Jesus said that? Money is necessary for us, right? But here, what Jesus means or intended is that the love of money is dangerous is essential, but money should not be the priority in our service for God. Money always bring a lot of temptations. And even in India, churches in India, many church leaders, we hear a lot of corruptions, mismanagement. And so money is the root cause of all evils. And that is what we find even written in the Bible. And so here, we need money, no doubt, but we may not be, we should not be too much materialistic or money-minded because in our ministry, we are going there to serve God. Serving God faithfully, that should be our priority. God will provide all our needs. Depend on God. Total dependence on God for your survival. Trust and have faith in God. God will provide everything according to our needs. Because today, many churches are becoming very materialistic. You have many, you know, prosperity preachers today. Salvation become a prosperity oriented. So in this passage, what Jesus is reminded to his disciples exactly, Jesus is also telling us that serving God, service to God is our priority. God will provide all our needs, provided we have strong faith in God. Number two, do not take your bag or package. Will comes from God and is vital for life's sustenance. So here also, possession of wealth influences the attitude, attitude of the people towards God. So this is what we also need to look into, that God will provide. We don't need to worry about our family or about our housing or whatever. God will provide, and so do not take your bag or your beatings, means God is there to help you, and we need to obey him, whatever the circumstances may be. This is what this passage is also telling to us. In other words, the resources, the resources for our ministry, God is going to provide, provide it. We are committed to the service of God, provided we have strong faith in commitment in God, God is going to provide. This idea is, as institution, we also have a lot of maybe financial difficulties. But if we work hard with dedication for the institution, God is going to provide. But it demands hard work from us. Same way, God is also demanding from the graduates your commitment, your sincerity, your dedication, your sacrifice in hard work for Christ's sake. Third, do not take your sandal, it says, or do not take your shoes or chapel. 
sandal or shoes symbolizes high social uh, status and also fame. And it also represents self-pride and it is only reserved for the rich people, kings and nobles, and soldiers in the particular group. The poor people, people in the margins, they never had the opportunity to wear. That is what you will find in the Old Testament. And even in the New Testament time, that was very much prevalent. Slaves were not allowed to come to their masters with sandals. To take off one sandal signifies humbleness, humility. Without humility, one cannot serve Jesus Christ. Jesus demonstrated the servanthood model of ministry. We cannot serve Jesus by maintaining our social status quo. Powers, authority, those who want to exercise. This is contrary to what Jesus is telling us in the Bible. To serve God means humility, servanthood model that we need to take. So Jesus told his disciples, do not take your sandals, do not take your jackals. That means be a humble servant of God. Be a humble servant of God. Humility is the only thing that God demands from us. Yes, we need theological degrees, high degrees, but this is what we need to. We need it in this part of the world because we also need to be equipped ourselves in the word of God. The knowledge of God that we need to have a sound doctrine, a sound doctrine to serve God. But it will take the degrees simply to boast ourselves, then we are in a wrong state. And therefore, let us be humble to serve God. The fourth point is Jesus sent them two by two. Jesus did not send individual, but he sent them two by two. What is this? Serving God is a collective, collaborative. We need to correlate. We need to, you know, work together as a team, as a community. There is no individualistic in serving God. We are serving in the community. And therefore, Collectively, we need to work together. Collectively. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 says, two are better than one. Two are better than one. And then it also says, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 also says, one rope can be easily break. But when two, three ropes bind together. Very difficult to break it. Same way, individually, if you try to work in God's vineyard, you will not get success. Because the church is a community of believers. In this community of believers, we need to work together as a team. When we say as a team, it is very difficult sometimes because some church leaders cannot get along with some others because of the different fractions, different ideologies, or cannot really, you know, adjust together. But the Bible is saying that we need to work together because there are a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties at the in our churches, in our society. 
to fight all this evils we need to stand together together we can do together we can fight against all the collective evil forces we need to work together we stand together so this is one thing that we need to learn churches need to work together even with other denominations and extend the mutual relationship even to develop other faiths because india is a you know pluralistic context in religion in language in culture even the isabis community is also a very plural community here a mini world because community comes from different backgrounds ethnicities castes and so on right and living as a community here so this is one thing we also need to learn that without collaborating without uniting we cannot with success so unity is very very important unity standing together unitedly to fight evil forces this is what we need to be then jesus also said that There will be rejection in opposition in God's service. So Jesus warned the disciples that all might not will come wholeheartedly. Similarly, in your pastoral ministry, all may not appreciate your contributions and your good works. There will be opposition, and there will be discouragements. Jesus told his disciples that if people rejected you or if people reject you then they should move away from that place dusting everything dusting everything and do not carry anything from that place so do not carry any grudges or resentment against your enemies. Okay? There may be oppositions. And so you dust it, throw it, but don't carry back all those resentments, all those, you know, grudges, that anger that you have against them, those who are opposing you. So Jesus is saying that, leave it. You just move forward. Leave it to God. God is going to deal with it. Love your enemies. Loving God, loving our enemies, loving our neighbors. This is what Jesus also commanded us to do in our ministry. So the purpose of sending two by two by Jesus Christ is that was that to proclaim the gospel. to proclaim the kingdom of god what is the kingdom of god today it is about doing justice doing rights and also bringing peace resisting wrong doings and speaking against corruptions and exploitations the kingdom of god is not futuristic kingdom of god is to be established justice for all on this earth and this is what jesus also said in the beginning of his ministry that he has come to establish the kingdom of god jeremiah 1:10 which is read to us says today i appoint you over nations and over kingdom to pluck up and to pull down to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant this is also the commandment the word of god is given to us especially to the great reading class that you need to be bold you have to say black is black white is white and this is one thing often we cannot we cannot say we have no courage to say in reality 
but be courageous. God is going to help you. And this is the type of disciples. This is the type of, you know, ministers or pastors in evangelists, in missionaries that God wants from us today. God is sending you with a purpose to transform the world. So be faithful to your calling. Resist the reality of evil and the empire and follow the return of Jesus in obedience, in love. Serving God needs collective work. Today, I want to tell you that the question comes to the always, you know, graduating class, fresh, coming out from the seminaries. When you are being posted in the different job, the question comes is whether I should compromise with the existing policies in order to survive, or I should bring transformation so that I can also challenge the existing evils of the society. So these are the conflicts that we always have. And then many graduates, when they enter the ministry, many of them they compromise because survival is also a big issue. And so if you resist, then definitely you may be kicked out or you may be transferred to a very remote area also, and so on. But I want to challenge you, my dear brothers and sisters, resist the temptations. Stand for the truth. Like Jesus, we also need to stand for the truth, no matter whatever the circumstances may be. And so, with this few words of challenge, I want to, you know, assure you that God is with you. God is with you. Go out and transform the church in society. In other words, go out and transform the world. The world needs, like you young people, dynamic to transform. And so with that challenge, wish you all the best for your ministry. Thank you so much, the CBS community and the audience for patiently listening to the word of God. May God bless us all. Thank you. for sharing the word of God and challenging our graduates with clarity and passion. For conferring of diplomas, I would like to call Dr. Samuel George, our principal, and Reverend Makhani Kasongba, Register of SIPS. May I request Billy Catherine to stand. Respected Principal, I hereby present the following candidates who have successfully completed the courses prescribed by the South India Biblical Seminary so that they may receive a graduate diploma in divinity by your hand on this day.
Council of SIBS and the faculty, I confer upon you the graduate diploma in divinity. Lead a life worthy of the call to which you have been called, seeking in all things the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the reception and extension of God's reign and the sustain the honor of your standing in the seminary. In the name of the triune God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May I request respected Dr. Samad George, Principal SIBS, to honor and hand over the certificates. And may I also request Reverend Dr. Lima Tula, Honorable Speaker, Minister Center of Serampur, to hand over to hand over the chair. And Reverend Sunil Kante, Commission Speaker, Executive Secretary of SIBS, to give the gifts. Now may I call upon the graduates, Mr. Ahinjo S. Mr. Anish Masi. Mr. Pippin Raj Daniel Jacob D. Miss Evangeline Saliva M. Mr. Jos Paul Che. Mr. Jos Paul Che. Mr. Peters Anos Rudy Samir. Mr. Rasna 
Raj A. This is Rosemary Chain. Stalin J. Mr. Stephen Woolley. This city project to sit. May I request MD graduate to stand. Respect that principle. I hereby present the following candidate who has successfully completed the courses prescribed by the South India Political Seminary so that. He may receive the degree Master of Divinity by your hand on this stage. And the Council of Assyrians. And the faculty, I confer upon you, Master of Divinity, be the life worthy of the call to which you have been called, seeking in all things the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the reception and extension of God's reign, and the sustain the honor of your standing in this seminary, in the name of the Triune God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. May I request again or respect that principle, Dr. Samar George, Reverend Dr. Limatula, political speaker, registration of Sampo College, University, and Reverend Sunil Kante, commissioner speaker, executive secretary, SIDS, to kindly hand over the certificates, cap, and the key. May I request Mr. Silas Deva Prabhu to receive the key.
may I request MDF graduate to sit. Now, lastly, may I request BCS graduates to stand. Respect that principle. I hereby present the following candidates who have successfully completed the courses prescribed by the South India Biblical Seminary so that they may receive the graduate diploma in Christian Studies by your hand on this screen. By the virtue of the powers and authority vested in me by the South India Biblical Seminary and the Council of Societies and the faculty I confer upon you the graduate diploma in Christian Studies. Be the library of the call to which you have been called seeking in all things the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, the perception and extension of God's reign, and the sustain the honor of your standing in the seminary in the name of the triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May I request respected principal Dr. Samuel George, Dr. Dr. Limachula, Dr. Speaker, Dr. Sina of Sarambu, Dr. And Reverend Sunil Tanke, commissioning speaker, as executive secretary of SIBS, he will hand over the certificates, care, and gifts. Now, may I invite this CS graduate, Mr. Saidi Banu Aichi. <laughs> This is Anita Von Muller. Daniel. George Principal SIBS, Hotel Lima Chula Lankuma, and Reverend Sulitanke for distributing the certificates, cap, and kids. May I request CCS graduates to take their seats. Hearty congratulations to the 2024 graduates. I ask Mrs. Rose Mary for the prayer of commitment. You are no longer my own, but yours. Put us to what you will, rank us with whom you will. Put us to doing, put us to suffering. Let us the employed for you, or laid aside for you, exalted for you, a broad low for you. Let us be full, let us be empty. Let us have all things, let us have nothing. Be freely, wholeheartedly, yield all things to your pressure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Son and Holy Spirit, Amen. 
by the sea of galilee and saw peter and andrew casting a net into the sea jesus said to them follow me and i will make you fisher for people when jesus came to your hometown and saw you thinking and planning for future jesus called you and said follow me do you believe this the cry of the oppressed people god asked isaiah whom shall i send who will speak for us and seeing the harass and helpless crowd like sheep without shepherd jesus said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few yes dear beloved the voice of god of isaiah and the jesus of nazareth is calling you out who will go for me will you follow me <laughs> go into the world with the assurance of god's promises that wherever you go god will be with you may the prophetic voice of jesus of nazareth and may the transforming power of the holy spirit inspire strength in you to do the life affirming ministry mission and ministry of god consecrational team by sadie is called
Chris Reverend Mohammed Kazama for the announcement of the academic awards. And I also invite our Senate Regist Registrar, Reverend Dr. Imanatula Longkamara for the distribution of awards. Thousand twenty four graduates of SIBS excel in academic aspects in different subjects and also in social and spiritual content. To honor and appreciate them, SIBS gives an award. The following students are requested to stand when I call out their names Mr. Stephen Gulli. Following list of awards is awarded to Mr. Stephen Moon. Dr. Abdullah Al Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Biblical Studies Old Testament. Reverend M. Isaac Bilalan Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Biblical Languages Hebrew. Highest Grades in Christian Ministry. Miss Betty Sheldon Memorial Award for Highest Grades in History and Mission Classroom. Reverend Tucker Asser Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Hebrew Studies and Grades. And Highest Grades in Religion Cluster. SIBS is giving him six awards. Now may I invite <laughs> Stephen Wally to receive from our honorable May I request Mr. Ahim Cho as to stand. The following list of awards is the following word. These of words are awarded to Mr. Ahim S. Miss Betty Sheldon Memorial Award for Highest Grades in History and Mission Cluster. PK Korean Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Biblical Studies New Testament. Miss Stella Selvraj Award Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Christian Theology Cluster. Highest Grades in Christian Ministry. Reverend Dr. Augustine Asim Memorial Award for Overall Highest Grades in Biblical Studies. And Reverend Herb Reinhardt Memorial Award for Best Preaching. So the sixth award is awarded to Mr. Ahim J. S. I request him to receive a word from our honorable political speaker. May I request Mr. President Rats A. <laughs> Mr. President Raj A received two awards. Highest grades in Christian Ministry Cluster. And Mr. Prevalent N. Hamby Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Integrated and Interdisciplinary Cluster. May I invite Mr. President Raj? To receive the awards from our honorable political speaker, Reverend Dr. Limatula Langkumba, who is your Senate of Senate. May I request Mr. Josh Paul Chain to stand. Dr. D. Odiu Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Biblical Languages Creek is. To Mr. Jos Paul Chi. May I invite Jos Paul to receive this award from our honorable Dr. Speaker, Dr. Lima Tualang Kumar, who is the Minister of May I invite Mr. Silas Deva Prabhu R. 
Stand. Miss Grace Rice Memorial Award for highest grades in MPA MDF studies is awarded to Mr. Silas Deva Prabhu R. May I invite Mr. Silas Deva Prabhu R to receive this award from Honorable Valentine Speaker, Reverend Dr. Imadura Longkumar, who registers with us. We do have the award for BCS. May I request Mrs. Anita Polamar to stand. Mary and Lester Hamilton Memorial Award for Overall Highest Grades in BCS Studies is awarded to Mrs. Anita Polamar. May I invite Mrs. Anita to receive this award from our Honorable Valedictory Speaker we also have a word for the highest grades in scripture knowledge examination. In the academic year 2023-2024, we conducted two times of scripture knowledge examination. And the highest grades goes to two students. Miss Alice Sandaraj, Memorial Award for Highest Grades in Scripture Knowledge Examination, goes to Mr. Wilson Bach, BDH Sengel, and Miss Kirby Grace, and the first. So may I invite both of them to receive this award from our Honorable Valedictory Speaker. Thank you so much, Reverend Dr. Limadula Lankumar, for the presentation of the words. As IBS family congratulates and appreciate to the awardees for having shown your incessant effort to receive excellence. Release of the book cover page is a part of our academic challenging eligible endeavor. We reflect upon a review. For this year, we chose Journey in Faith, Hope, Love, and Unity as our theme. We decided to reflect on the theme from various perspectives. As such, all of all our faculty members contributed an article on the theme. We also invited articles from other well-known theologians. The goal was to reflect the theme from the perspective of biblical theology, systematic theology, Contextual theology, Christian ministry, history and mission, religion and philosophy, and interdisciplinary approaches. We hope this monograph will make a significant contribution to the growth of Christian reflection in and from India. The book title, the book is titled as Journey in Faith, Hope, Love, and Unity, Indian Conversation. Total of 16 articles from various departments are included in it. We are indeed honored to have the forward written by Reverend Dr. O.B. Jatanan, the former principal of United Theological College, Bangalore. Currently, it is in the process of editing. We are expecting it to be published within a month. Today, we are indeed very happy to release the cover page of the book. We are honored to have it released by the Registrar of the Senate of Sri Rampur College, Reverend Dr. Limatula Longamar. So I would like to request ma'am to come forward to release the book and pray for the book.
friends i release this book titled journey in faith hope love in unity indian conversations editor vishwan jaraj or insani shitri samuel george in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit for the kingdom of god and also for the nourishment of the churches in india and across the world thank you time for announcement i would like i request our principal to come forward and give the of SIPS is a very important work and it doesn't happen without the help of our faculty members and staff members i want to recognize two very important people who served our institution for a long period This is Bamini Christina. She has served our institution for the last thirty years. And this is Amuda, who is our librarian. She too has served our institution for the last thirty years. Today we want to recognize both of them. If you can come forward. And I'll request uh, Reverend Sunil Bangde, our Executive Secretary, to honour them. I want all of our faculty members, if you can stand and face the congregation, because I want everyone to see uh, our faculty members who have really worked hard. Uh, these are our faculty members. <laughs> Thank you. I want to make an announcement as part of our endeavor of uh, theological education and uh, high standards of academic academics, and also the requirements of the Senate of Sarampur. Uh, there are certain requirements that we need to fulfill. As part of that, our two new faculty members will be joining. In the month of uh, May, Dr. Ibit Long and uh, his wife, Mrs. Morshina Ayer. Dr. Ibit Long will be joining in the Department of Theology, and uh, Mrs. Morshina Ayer will be joining in the Department of Counseling. So we look forward to their their work and ministry uh, in SIBS. Conclude our program. I call Miss Anusaya Velpuri for the closing prayer and benediction by our Senate Registrar, Reverend Limachila Lakula.
Precious and loving God, we thank you for our carriers, their parents, family members, and the sponsors, and well wishers. May our guardians find, continue to embrace and support from the largest community as they journey through life and ministry, <coughs> faith, hope, love, and unity. Bless their lives this day and with goodness and uh, success. Enable them to stay true to their calling for your greater glory. What is right, good, and just, and to use their talents wisely and in service to others. Empower them to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great, great love, guided by your life in Jesus' name. Let us receive the benediction. May your voices rise to pronounce peace and justice in the world. May you celebrate and lift those around you. And may your achievements grow in cause growth in the community at large. May the blessings of God who loves, sustains, and redeems all life be with you. May the triune God's light shine on you and make your path clear in this faith journey. May the hope carry you through the challenging times and gratitude be your response when life is good. May your days be filled with curiosity and adventure and may you show the unity with the deprived and marginalized community to bring honor and glory to God. Amen. Word of thanks by Reverend A. Jack Good evening, friends. It's a uh, little hard time for me to give you know thanks because now I'm sitting and to think about to who all should I say thanks. So first of all, I would like to thank God for His presence and guidance for this time. Uh, secondly, I would like to thank our registrar ma'am from Senate of Serambur for his, uh, your presence, your valuable presence here in our college and encouraging not only our graduates but also us by your words. Thirdly, I would like to thank all the teaching faculties who have been working towards this day and also all the board members for their encouragement that you have given to us, to our students by your presence. I would like to thank the graduating students. Without you, we would have not had this day. Then I would like also to thank all the student friends who have really worked hard in various ways, helping us to have a successful day of celebration. And also I would like all the, uh, to thank all the parents, relatives, and dear ones for your presence to bless our students. And also I would like to thank all the workers who have really worked hard towards this day in various other ways. Also, I thank the choir team for the beautiful uh, singing. Uh, finally, I would also like uh, to thank all those people who prayed for this uh, uh, graduation service. And also, I would like to thank those people who really supported towards uh, this program. If I forget anyone else, 
I would like to thank them also. I hopefully added up all the people. And once again, I would like to thank all of you for your presence here and to bless this day uh, wonderfully. Thank you. Father, with a small team, I request SIP use Korea to meet. Thank you. 